Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another cast interview. This time we're talking to Avadni, who isn't just a member of the cast, but like me, is a director of the Mystery Lounge. So hopefully this should be a, uh, an interesting talk, not just about uh, the character and everything, but about uh, uh, the, the uh, company as well. Avadni, welcome to these little interview things. Uh, tell me uh, a little bit about yourself. How did you get into uh, acting, Into to, because you do voice coaching as well? How did you get into that? Okay, well, I started my life as an actress at 18 at Nottingham Playhouse, getting a student's place from the Arts Council. Um, I then stayed in the theatre, various theatres, until I got married to my first husband. We moved to Cardiff. I, be- I went back into my dancing roots for a little while. I then, the marriage split up, I went to London. I went into worked for Walt Disney for a while, PR. And then I came back to Nottingham and uh, married my childhood sweetheart and we proceeded to have babies. Um, After that, I really needed and wanted to get back into the business, but my husband didn't want me to be an actor. So I actually went into television. And uh, while I was a minor C personality uh, uh, working for Central Television, my old drama school asked me to go and present their prizes and my old teacher said to me please will you come I still think you'll be a good teacher and I said oh all right I'll think about it so I took my teaching qualifications so that's how I got into teaching. So Um, teaching was something that you fell into then it wasn't really a sort of a a lifelong ambition to? No in fact I I desperately when I was 18 um, I got into three drama schools but the Nottingham City Council in those days you got grants you didn't have student loans you got grants you didn't have to pay them back and um, Nottingham City Council said, as long as I took a teacher of drama's course at the drama schools, because in those days, drama was never done anywhere but at a drama school. I mean, you couldn't go to university and read drama, for it, for instance. Um, and I said, I don't want to be a teacher. I want to be an actress. So I refused. <laughs> <laughs> Hence me going the route I went in the end. I didn't go to drama school. I learnt on the job, so to speak. Um, but uh, I went in to help her a little at, uh, in, the, in the drama school and I loved it. I discovered that everybody had been quite right, that I really wasn't a bad teacher and I really did enjoy it. So I started teaching privately then. Um, and then uh, I eventually ended up as director of drama at one of the colleges, in, uh, one of the schools in Nottingham. Um, became an examiner for speech and drama for, the, for Lambda, which was great. Um, and then my husband died and I thought, oh, right, I'm going to go back into acting as I haven't been able to do that for you. I've been able to teach it, not been able to do it myself. And so seven years ago, I went back into acting. Um, and one of the jobs I applied for was with Natasha. Uh, and one of her, well, her very first play that she'd written. Um, and I went as a character for her. We became very good friends. I did two or three others, others with her. Um, and then she, she stayed with me for a while and we talked about this company. We started the company. Uh, and it's kind of gone from there. So that's how I, A, got into tutoring and B, got into acting. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> that's, that's do you, kind of do you find that the reasons that you want to do acting now are different from the reasons that you wanted to do it when you were, I don't know, 16, 17, 18? Um, that's a really good question. <laughs> it's something Thank you. I, I have to ask at least one good question every interview. <laughs> that's that's... Really, it's not a question that anybody has ever asked me, which is really funny. <laughs> um, do I... No, I actually think it's still the same thing. Um, I wanted to be an actress in the age of six and I missed it all the years I was bringing up children and doing ordinary jobs, proper jobs, <laughs> proper jobs. Um, <laughs> and I really did. And I've, I've always, uh, I've, it's just something I've always loved doing. So no, I don't think I want to do it for different reasons. I am doing an entirely different kind of acting because the business has changed beyond recognition since I was at first a young uh, theatre actress and I have done very little theatre I mean Tash doing the murder mysteries is the only live work other than one other that I've done since I got back the rest of the time I'm all doing short films and and things like that and voices Um, so do you do you gravitate towards theatre when you can or do you prefer to be on screen or do you prefer to just you do voice acting I actually like both live and and film acting, camera acting. I, I love both of those. Um, voice I do because I can, and 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 uh, I get offered, you know, the odd job, which is quite good. It's uh, a friend of mine who 
was at drama school with me, went to Nottingham Playhouse with me, and we've been friends for, ooh, 66 years, because we were at junior school together. Um, started being uh, an audiobook narrator about 15 years ago, and is now one of the best in the country. She's, uh, she's just, she's just audio, uh, audio uh, Mrs. Daraway by, Oh, I, you know, I'm so bad at names. There's a very famous. <laughs> it'll, it'll, boom, ignore it is that. a very famous book, and, and to be honest, I don't know who the, the author <laughs> was either. So that's. <laughs> I wish I could remember Virginia Woolf. What? This is Harry, but Virginia Woolf. Um, and she's just—that's how good she is now. She does. Uh, she and she's won lots of awards. And Helen doesn't want to do anything but that. She loves being doing audio books. I did. Uh, it's certainly been a boom industry for the last ten years, at least. I think, and I, I, I don't think there are there are actors who clearly wouldn't be working at the same rate that they were, or that they are now, if they weren't doing audiobooks. And there are certain actors who um, have just become the voice of either series of audiobooks, or I, I'm thinking about James Masters, who used to be Spike yeah. in Buffy, uh, being yeah. the voice of the Dresden Files. Yeah. Absolutely, and and Stephen Fry, obviously Harry Potter, and uh, yeah, um, and there's there's people like Luke Daniels and James Patrick Cronin who do a lot of the sort of sci-fi fantasy sort of books, um, and and yeah, you you can't really Matthew. get around them, but they're, they're, they're people who have become famous for being audiobook readers, which is, uh, seems really yeah. strange for me because it was always yeah. when I was a kid reading an audiobook was always the famous person reading to you, and that's yeah. why you bought it in the first place. Yes, it's just now it's not. I mean, audiobooks, um, as you say, are really the way to go. I personally don't like audiobooks. I don't, I'd much rather read the story than hear the story. Um, and as a, an actor, I couldn't do them. I did five, six short stories, um, a short story book for GCSE. Um, and they were fine because they were short stories and I could mm. take time off in between them. But having to sustain that same voice, the same feel the set I pull for hours it takes Helen sometimes 20 25 hours to to uh record a, a two-hour book you mm. know it, because of, of doing it and uh she and she does all the technical stuff as well um I, I could no I yeah I, I wouldn't like to be an audiobook reader but I do like doing the the odd voice service but no I love life live theater uh you get immediate feedback um and there's nowhere to hide Filming, I love. True. I enjoy filming, but it can be edited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yes. make anybody look good if you edit. I mean, you edit all of these. I mean, you can make anybody look good. Um, but uh, yes, I, I love life theatre. I, I, but I love the genre of more murder mystery because, again, it's very popular. But also, I think it 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 kind of appeals to so many different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Murder mystery, it, it can be for geeks. It could be for people who like puzzles, who like finding things. It's it could be it's, it's for people who enjoy theatre, enjoy a good story acted out for them. I mean, it's a massive audience, uh, and I think I like that. I do definitely like doing them live, although the podcast has been a tremendous fun, tremendous fun. We've had a lovely cast, but it is still quite odd being in all our own rooms, our own houses, miles away from it, each other. It does sort of fit the very, um, very the thing, but I, I would have loved to have been able to all be in a studio together when oh. we were doing it. That would have been great. Because yeah, I, I, I've done a fair amount of um, kind of radio stuff and I love that kind of working environment, you know, where, yeah. where you've, you're standing in front of a mic and you're giving a performance. I think it's quite an interesting way of, of working. Um, but let's move on to kind of a bit more about murder mystery and, and about the mystery lounge itself. Um, what are your kind of hopes for the company? What do you think that, 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 that uh, what do you want to get out of being a, a murder mystery company in, in the 2020s? I, I, I just think uh, I want us to be the best that possibly can be of the genre. I want us to, I mean, what, what is incredible about Tash's scripts is that they're so intricate, they're so detailed. Um, and having you on board has been brilliant because you've the one that, that's hidden the clues in, in, in all the, uh, you know, in the websites and things like that. And, uh, and that I think is unique. Um, I, I think that does make us unique. Tash's live shows were unique. I've worked for two or three murder mystery companies and Tash's yeah. are unique because they're well rehearsed. 
which nobody else does. You usually turn up with a script. You've had a couple of days. You say hello to your fellow actors and you get dressed and you go on and you do it mm -hmm. uh, with no rehearsal at all. Um, a lot of his improv, but then a lot of Tash's is improv. Yeah. But the background she gives you as an actor, the background stories and the rehearsal you have with each other to make sure that the little set pieces are perfect and then you can move, move to the improvisations uh, and the integration with the audience. So um, this was sort of a completely different experience because we didn't have that kind of rehearsal time. It was very much turn up, we've got the scripts, read the scripts, read them again just in case, and then, you know, make, make changes as we go. How did you find that process? I found that quite odd for uh, Tash's productions, but because she had still given us all of our backstory. I mean, we had very big handbooks for each mm. character. So Tash did as much for us as actors as she possibly could. And it was up to us as actors. And this is me as an actor, not as a director. Uh, as actor, it's up to me to read my backstory, to know where I was, to know that the whole of the Kiltondale um, that I was living in and what part I played in it and, and et cetera. And we all had to do that. So though we didn't get the sort of rehearsal time we would do for a live show, we still kind of got the background. We still got the meat that we needed. And then when we were re re recording, of course, uh, we were reading. Another reason we didn't have to rehearse so much is because we have the scripts. Whereas live shows, you have to learn your lines. Again, I think that's quite, quite like about radio is like, you've got the scripts in front of you if you need to. <laughs> tend to agree with you that is one of the definite pluses of, of doing things uh, for radio or podcasts or over at microphone how do, how do you find learning that. lines because it's all I, as i get older it's the thing that i think i'm not sure i could do that anymore yeah i mean when i was young i had a photographic memory so it was so easy i used to read everything once i didn't tell you what top of the page we were on and everything i knew i knew the entire play um <laughs> yeah. just a bit. um now i i yes i i there are uh, techniques I use, which is I, I always read it out loud. I read it out loud several times and then I start learning line for line and I add the lines as I go along. So it takes right. me a lot longer than it used to. Um, mm. But I've always thought after having read it two or three times, whereas I could have just read it once when I was young, two or three times now, I've got a really good idea of what I'm saying. Um, as a teacher, I am, and a director, I am absolutely hot on getting the right lines, working on the premise that a, a writer spends hours getting the rhythm of his character's voices and yeah. words, and it's so important. So uh, I am really, really careful to learn the lines accurately. Sure, uh, yeah. But I know them roughly, having just read them two or three times. And I always read out loud, obviously, because you've got two senses then learning. You, you're listening and looking. And that's really so. Great. Have you have you worked with people who will just come? Because you say you you know you've done improvisation. Have you worked with people who will just improvise on a script? Oh yeah, yes. And how did you get on with that? Very badly. Really? Yeah, I told them off. Right, I see. <laughs> One actor sat for it. <laughs> I still always used to be the thing that I found when I was because I am a writer and and uh, after doing a. a play for god knows how many weeks or rehearsing a play for god knows how many weeks and then being in the middle of a run or something you just get bored with a line and will say something different i i i don't like sticking with the lines that are on the page if they're not going to make that's sense but clearly that's not that's very naughty as a writer i mean yes things get changed um and everybody's human however i don't i i do try to stick to the lines that are written. If they've, um, if by first, I mean, if it's a new play, then uh, you usually have the writer with you anyway. If it's course, an established yeah, yeah. play, it's established with those words. <laughs> and there's going to be somebody in the audience who knows the play backwards and it's going to create havoc because you've changed the words. Uh, you know, I just, no, just sit with them. If the writer's written them, I, you, you, you use their words. And I'm not, I'm not a writer. Well, I, no, I'm not a writer by this way. I have written stuff, but I'm not a writer. Yeah. Um, but I know how much agony writers go through to okay. get. Yeah, they do. They do. Just the rhythm right. But and then they don't have to live with it once, and, and I know this from experience. Once you turned in a script, that's it. That you, you go away and you start the next one. 
well, you don't have to live with what's what actually ends up on screen. Well, when I've done new scripts, I've usually had the writer there all the time. Right. The yeah. So the writer, if you've gone, yeah, this doesn't work. The writer's gone, okay. Well, what do you want to say, and how? how and and sure. usually come up with a compromise. Uh, so in new plays, you usually find in the theatre that the writer will be there. Yes. I mean, yes. Of course. Very rarely in a, in a theatre play do you find that a writer has just drove, dropped the script to the director and walked away. No, that doesn't happen. So, what I type of theatre do you get on best with? What, what's, if if there was one sort of genre that you think actually I could do this for the rest of my life and never have to do anything else? What would that be? Being in a theatre, doing a play, just in anything a in a theatre. Anything mm-hmm. in a theatre. I was in. Uh, with, I started my life in repertoire at Nottingham Playhouse. I've done weekly rep. I've done two weekly rep. I've done three weekly rep. Absolutely sure. love it. My battery is emptying, and this has got to be near the end because. Well, this is this is probably a good point to say. Actually, it's lovely speaking to you. I'm sure we'll do this again at some point before the end of the the run. Um, that's it for this particular video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a big thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see more or less or tell us what you enjoyed and what you what you'd like to see more of uh, and of course if you're new here please hit that subscribe button hit the little bell icon don't forget that uh once every few weeks we have got new episodes of the viral murders coming out we're always going to have uh, some new stuff for you so until then thanks ever so much for coming along goodbye and good luck bye everybody <laughs>